Chester County. Because we've got the power to enhance your life. Dial a brand, Marvin Leslie and Home Appliance Corporation are all inter-county dealers. 24 hours every day. Long Island's own news network. This is News 12 Long Island. Now, the night edition. Hello again, I'm Colleen McVeigh. And I'm Melba Tolliver. They are strangers, but tonight commuters feel a shared pain. Flowers and heartfelt notes are being left at the Maryland train station. It's been two days since a gunman opened fire on board a crowded LIRR train, killing five people. Tonight, News 12's Lisa LaRocca is at the station where commuters are mourning the victims. Lisa? Uh, Colleen, it's really an eerie feeling standing here now thinking back to the horrific scene that took place just a few days ago. And the thousands of people and emergency vehicles and media trucks are all gone. The only sign that there was once trouble here are the dozens of flowers and cards that lay on the platform. It's been a few days now since the ill-fated 533 train pulled into the Merlin Avenue station, but the shock of what happened here has yet to wear off. People are trying to cope with the tragedy in different ways. Fellow commuters have been leaving flowers and notes all along the track in memory of the five people who were killed here. It's a very nice gesture and, you know, we're remembering the people who were, who were hurt and, uh, I don't know, I'm very sad about it. You know, it's very, it's very scary. I feel bad for the families. It's a hard time of the year. This small Long Island community of Garden City quickly pulled together Tuesday night trying to help the victims. Many who live near the station offered their homes to anyone who needed it. This young man was on an earlier train and ended up driving one of the victims home. I don't remember her name. She was in shock at the time. Uh, I was on the cellular phone. She asked to use my cellular phone. She knocked on the window. And uh, I offered, you know, she asked where I'm going, I offered a ride home, yeah. drove her home. Many of the people who left flowers say they didn't even know any of the commuters in that third car. But like this woman, who didn't want to give us her name, says she just feels like it's the right thing to do. I think what anyone who's decent would do. What else can you do except feel for their family? It's because I'm decent. I'm against everything that that animal stands for. Uh, it's really so touching to, to see all these flowers and wreaths and to read some of the cards just to give you an idea of what some of them say, an unsigned note attached to a single red rose that reads, my heart goes out to all of those affected by this unspeakable act. Another one that says to the victims, families, you will forever be remembered in our hearts and prayers. Now, a lot of the people that we talked to earlier said that uh, this is something that has affected them so deeply and something that they just will never be able to forget. Reporting from Garden City, I'm Lisa LaRocca, News 12, Long Island. Now back to you in the studio. Thank you, Lisa. Commuters and passers-by are not the only ones remembering those gunned down. Family and friends paid their last respects tonight to 24-year-old Richard Nettleton in Garden City. An old classmate at Mineola High School remembered Nettleton. I came here for a respectful living, but still living, so I, uh, I hope, you know, this will, uh, you know, stop people or, you know, and uh, <laughs> wake them up. 51-year-old James Goricki was also remembered tonight at the Cassidy Funeral Home in Mineola. Goricki's co-workers have set up a fund in his name, and if you'd like to make a donation, you can write to the James Goricki Foundation, care of Apple Bank for Savings, 222 Old Country Road, Mineola, New York, 11501. Now, uh, Colin Ferguson's shooting spree has caused a double tragedy for a Mineola woman. Carolyn McCarthy's husband died in the hail of bullets, and her son is clinging to life. Now, mother and wife, Carolyn McCarthy, is trying to be strong for her child as she mourns her husband's death. News 12's Nicole Nogut reports. Kevin and Dennis McCarthy had taken the same trip together on the Long Island Railroad for the last two months. But instead of fostering a new bond between father and son, that fateful ride on the 533 ended in tragedy. Dennis was killed and Kevin critically injured. Now Kevin's mother and Dennis's wife says she has no words for the trigger man. One person told me the motives. I, I 
don't have the energy to dwell on any of that right now. Um, Kevin right now is my main concern. Starting sometime tomorrow, I've got to start preparing myself for Dennis. Carolyn's husband of 27 years, Dennis McCarthy, was killed when Colin Ferguson allegedly opened fire on the Long Island Railroad Tuesday. Kevin was shot in the head, the bullet entering the right side of his skull and exiting the top of his head. Doctors say they didn't think Kevin would survive. So the fact that now he is awake and able to follow commands to squeeze the right hand and to wiggle the right toes um, is very good. On Nancy Road in Mineola, neighbors are trying to comfort the wife and mother who had her family taken from her, bringing her food and donating money for the mounting medical bills. I think it's terrible if it was me. I want to go out and look for the guy and shoot him, make it even. But Carolyn McCarthy says she prefers to keep memories of her husband and son close to her heart. He's just like his father. He's got his father's sense of humor. Um, he is, he's, he's a big kid. Um, he's about 6'2", 240, 250 pounds. He's a very gentle child. When she was asked where she finds the strength to deal with the tragedy and her husband's death, Carolyn McCarthy says she needs to be strong for her son now. Her husband, Dennis McCarthy, will be buried on Monday. In Mineola, Nicole Nogid, News 12, Long Island. Well, the man who allegedly caused so much pain is spending tonight in protective custody at the Nassau County Jail. Authorities feel fear that Colin Ferguson might try to kill himself or that someone might do it for him. There's concern inmates are angry because of the racist comments attributed to him. Ferguson is under a suicide watch and is in solitary confinement. Well, Ferguson's arrest was not a complete shock to some people. As News 12's Matt Jabler reports, students and teachers at Adelphi University say Ferguson's racial rage has been pent up for a long time. The murder and wounding of innocent commuters is certainly the most violent event Colin Ferguson has ever been linked with. But apparently there were signs long before he allegedly opened fire that all was not well with the 35-year-old Brooklyn man. Here on the campus of Adelphi, where Ferguson was a student as late as 1991, those who knew him painted the picture of an angry young man who showed signs of the fury that rocked a train car and ruined so many lives. If you disagreed with him, then you would associate you with racists. That, oh yeah, you are agreeing with racists, that's why you don't want to agree with me. Any kind of con con um, uh, disagreement, it becomes a racist uh, uh, disagreement. Professor Macapella, who's in the history department at Adelphi, says he first met Ferguson while investigating Ferguson's charge that a female student had called him a nigger. The professor says he eventually ruled the charge was unfounded. Macapella says Ferguson was an intelligent but troubled young man whom he once recommended see a psychiatrist. The professor recalled Ferguson vehemently objecting to a class discussion on the improvement of race relations in South Africa. He continued talking about, you know, this is not the, the forum for that. It should be a forum for the elimination of whites. Eventually, I told him to sit down. Before he sat down, he said, uh, you are one of those black people who have been employed at this institution to make sure that people like me don't succeed. Echoing those remarks, a former fellow student at Adelphi, who did not want to be identified, described Ferguson as extremely confrontational and said he would often spout his militant ideological views in the middle of class. He used to come to class with, you know, dark glasses and army jackets, sometimes wore the, the glasses in class, spoke with, you know, a light, you know, accent. He was, um, he, he's one guy I'll always remember from college, you know, he stuck out in my mind. And tragically, he will stick out in the minds of many Long Islanders, for whom riding the railroad will never be the same. In Garden City, Matt Jablow, News 12, Long Island. And Matt says Ferguson was arrested last year for harassing and physically assaulting a woman on the subway. Apparently, though, no formal charges were pressed in the case. The Long Island Railroad Police Officers Union says that the train massacre could have been prevented, but the Long Island Railroad says it was a random act by a crazed man. News 12's Joe Moskowitz looks into the possibility that one of the targets could have been a state official who often rides the 533.
Barbara Patton lives in Great Neck and on Tuesday drove to work instead of taking the 533. Work for her is chairing the State Workers' Compensation Board. Police say that was one of the offices Ferguson mentioned in personal notes they found in his apartment. Since 1989, Patton's office has been in touch with Ferguson. That's when he first filed a claim because of back and neck injuries. She says Ferguson was so articulate that in a rare move, the board decided to reopen his case after a settlement had been reached. It wasn't moving as quickly as he liked, but she says she was not so his target. It just was fortunate for me that I wasn't on that particular train because, as I say, I've taken it many times. Do you think it is possible that uh, you, have, you may have been the target or a target? Um, I don't think that at all. Um, and part of me won't even allow myself to think that. I think that um, whatever uh, motivated Colin Ferguson to do what he did, I don't know what it was. Um, and I don't think that I was the target of that. Whether it was a random act or Ferguson had a target, the head of the LIRR Policemen's Benevolent Association says perhaps more cops could have avoided the massacre. I believe that this man going to school on this train day in and day out, seeing no police presence, triggered where he was going to do it. Mayor Dinkins was a factor. I believe no police on the Long Island Rail was a factor. He says there's too much crime on the LIRR, and that's because there aren't enough police. He says the number of uniformed officers must be tripled. San Severo says a railroad is so unsafe that none of the members of the union will allow any members of their families to take the train alone. The LIRR says it is considering ways to increase security, but says the rails are getting safer to ride. A crime particularly against passengers uh, going from 1991 to 1992 dropped 10.9%. And comparing year-to-date figures up to October of this year to the previous year, it has dropped 23 percent. So we're proud of our police department and the work that they're accomplishing. And he says the LIRR will weigh its options carefully and will not rush into any changes in security. In Jamaica, Queen